Hey guys, this is Academic Phoenix, and welcome to Maya 103. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to model a simple character using Maya. Before we get started, let's talk about topology. What is topology? Topology, from the Greek something, place, and uh, some other random text, study, is the mathematical study of shapes on to topological spaces, and they lost me already. So. Um, I'm not too sure about the, the definition of topology, but I do know what it is in 3D. And to scare you a little bit, here's a picture of what topology would look like on an actual person. So basically, how it works is that we want to make sure that when we model our characters, it's going to deform properly when we rig it. And that's basically the purpose of this character, is that we are going to set it up so that it rigs for animation. The proper topology needs to have loops around the eyes and loops around the mouth, so that when she smiles or frowns or does anything that deforms the face in any manner, we'll be able to deform it properly and, well, make basically make it look nice. So in 3D terms, bloop, here is a face with proper topology. You can see that it's got loops around the eyes and loops around the mouth, so if she does need to deform, it will deform properly for rigging. Then does, that also includes for the body as well. The body also has to have proper topology, so when you rig the character and it's going to be animated, it will deform properly. So that includes the shoulders, the, sh um, the elbows, the back, so on so forth. So when we model our characters, we are going to take into consideration the topology of our characters. Alright, so now that we're ready, let's get started. I've already set up the Maya scene. And as you can see, my character has already been laid out in the perspective view. And if you go to the four point view, as you can see in the front, the front of the character faces the front of the camera, and the side of the camera has the side of the character. Another thing to take into consideration is that the character needs to be facing the positive Z. How do you know it's facing the positive Z? Well, take a look at the uh, little manipulators down here at the bottom and you can see that the character is facing Z. The purpose for that is again for rigging. Okay, let's get started on actually modeling the character. We're gonna get started by basically building her in pieces. First we're gonna start off with the leg, then the torso, then the arms, and then go on from there. A lot of modelers like to start with a square. I personally like to start off with a cylinder. Again, there's several ways you can model something. This is just one way out of many. So let's go ahead and get started with the cylinder. In my inputs on the right, I'm going to change my subdivision axis to 12. I want zero caps, and I want at least eight height, subdivision heights. I'm also going to assign a new material. It's going to be a Lambert, and I'm gonna make it semi-transparent so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna start off with the front. I'm going to scale it up a little bit so that it actually matches the leg. And the trick here is to scale on one particular direction. So, so far we've only scare, scaled in Y, not scared, scaled. And I'm also going to scale only in X. And the reason for this is that I know that I have complete control over the front view. Eventually I will work on the side view. For right now I'm just going to take care of what I have right now which is the front view. So the trick to this is to scale and then move, scale and move vertices. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to scale my bottom vertices. Again I'm just selecting the side. I'm going to move it up a little bit so I can get the ankle. So again scale and move. Select the next row scale, whoops, too much, and move. Let me do say that again. This time is scale, actually scale, and then move. And we're going to continue going up the leg, scaling, and then moving. So again, we're going to scale and move. Don't worry if it's not perfect, you're not uh, the knees and everything like that, we're going to add more geometry as we get further along. But right now, let's just go ahead and take care of the vertices that we have so far. So again, scale and then move. I'm just going to grab both of these and just kind of tweak it into place. And I scale a little bit more and then move it. Let me scale a 
scale this one down a little bit so it looks like a leg. Okay, so we started with that. Let's move to the side view. This leg's a little big. So again, this time we're going to be scaling on the Z. So I'm going to shrink my leg a little bit. Don't worry, I'm going to move everything into place. So I'm going to grab a chunk of them here, scale it in. And then I'm going to grab the bottom vertices and scale and move. So again, if you need to get closer, go for it. What's important in your concept art is to make sure that the ankles match the ankles, the bottom of the nose match the bottom of the nose from the side view to the, to the front view. Otherwise, you may have some issues and you're going to be doing a lot of guessing when it comes to uh, modeling a character. So make sure that if you're working on someone else's concept art or, someone, or you're creating your own concept art, you really want to make sure that the nose matches the front and the side view so you don't have to guess. You know exactly what your character is supposed to look like both in the front and side view and it's going to be accurate. It's very similar to a blueprint of a building or of a car. You really want to make sure that everything is accurate so when you model it it's going to be a lot easier. You don't have to do any guessing. Okay, I'll take care of the shorts some other time or later on. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and start adding mesh. We're going to go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. And what I'm looking for is just basically areas that might need a little bit more mesh information so that I can actually give it a little bit more accuracy. So I'm going to click on the letter G every single time I want to create the new, um, I want to create a new edge click and drag and then again you always want to scale it. You want to do it right away so that you don't forget uh, where you put where you added that extra edge. So for the knee you usually want to add at least a couple more edge loops because this one bends a lot. This is a deformation uh, situation so you want to make sure that uh, when the character is going to be rigged and you're going to add a knee joint uh, you want to make sure that it is as accurate as possible. I'm sorry. You want to make sure that the edges, there's enough edges on the knee on any area that bends so that when it actually does bend, you'll be able to, it'll be able to uh, flex properly. And can you guys guess where else would you want to have a lot of more extra edges? If you guess the ankle, you're absolutely right. You want to make sure that the ankle has enough edges because it flexes. Anywhere else? It'll be shoulders and elbows. Exactly. Wrists. Are you guys getting the idea? <laughs> okay, so now that we added edges, let's go ahead and on the front view, we're going to go ahead and tweak it so we can work at it on the side view. So I'm going to be moving some edges around to make sure that everything fits. Might want another one here just to give it a little bit more shape. Whoops, grab some vertices. They're definitely easier to control. Move it around. Grab these guys. Shape the leg a little bit more. Here's the knee that we just added a bunch of new edges. So just kind of tweak it there all right starting to come together slowly but truly maybe an edge here for her behind at least the bottom of her behind. We'll add more later. All right, let's take a look at in perspective view. Okay, starting to look like a leg. Not bad. Okay, let's take care of the feet. I'm gonna grab s at the bottom face. I'm gonna start with the bottom or with the front view. Edit mesh, extrude. We're gonna click on this little um, switch. The switch goes from normal normal mode to world space. I personally like to work in world space, especially since I'm extruding downward. 
Now this one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because I should probably do this in the side view just because there's a lot more detail in the side view and then I'll tweak it at the front but uh, basically it's the same story but this time when we extrude we're gonna go down a little ways to kinda start shaping it a little bit more and then extrude all the way down Again, you might want to grab some vertices and just kind of tweak it a little bit, especially this one, maybe this edge right here. She's got some shape here. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some front faces. Of course, we know that our feet are not just two toes. It's probably more like four. So this is a sock. Um, we're not going to be adding toes, but I'm going to show you guys how to do uh, fingers in a later lesson. All right, so flatten that out by clicking R, and again, you're just scaling it in one direction. You're going to go to Edit Extrude. Again, I like to work in I'd like to work in world space. Um, then we're going to scale, extrude, scale, extrude. And here come the toes. All right, let's take a look at it in this view. Probably want to crush it in a little bit here in this view, but let's go ahead and take a look at it on this side. We know that it's a sock, and we also know that feet are not this shape at all, so let's go ahead and make sure that um, it looks a little bit more like a toe, or like a, there's actually a foot in it. And we also, it kind of comes out like that because our foot is, an, is actually not straight, it's actually arched. Whoops. There we go. And what is this? We have what's called an end gone. An end gone basically means that instead of having four edges like a normal polygon, it actually has more than four. And those are, t those are the type of things we're going to try to avoid, so we need to fix this. So again, Edit Mesh, Interactive Split Tool. And we can probably just go across. Here goes to one, and then press Enter. And I click G again, click here, click to the other one. G, here, down. And now, let's see, where can we place our polygons. Let's see. Let's go here and across. Right. And let's count. Edges. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So now we have proper topology, at least at the bottom of the foot. I'm going to tweak this a little bit more so that it looks a little bit more like a foot. Okay, so, so far we have a foot. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit more off camera so I can um, kind of make it look a little bit more like an actual foot. And um, all right, the next time, the next part's gonna be the torso. Okay, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.